Right. Uh, I'm original from Taiwan. I moved to Shanghai eight years ago from, oh, from LA. And I'm doing mostly is I do, for the past five years, I do consulting work for internet company in, in the social media space. Uh, it's the boring day job, day job part. Uh, the more interesting part is they also run a hacker space in Shanghai called Xinchejian. Uh, we are the first uh, hacker space in Shanghai. What is a hacker space? A hacker space is a space with the, it's, it's a physical space and a community and uh, a tours to and for what? people who come and, and tour and okay. tour and uh, for people who wants to tinker with things. I mean, mostly uh, from electronics to uh, toys to everyday appliance. Um, we have a concentration mostly on people are finding it becomes easier and more interesting to starting to put intelligent on stuff around us. Um, one of the first things people are starting to build is robotics. And this is not the industrial robot, but it's the, the funny one. Uh, people slap a microcontroller on a RC machine, an RC car, and have been running around with intelligence. Not very smart, but still a little bit of intelligence. Uh, we From there, we starting to get into people come up with all sort of different crazy projects to do on the weekend to relax. So that's so the hackerspace. After work hackerspace. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, I and mean, this started as the, I mean, a lot of new interesting projects should start that this way. Now, I mean, if we, uh, people starting to goof around with technology to see what we can do with it and finding a new interesting niche. And I think that's the, that's how we push technology forward. So are you providing the space? Or yeah, we are providing what? the space, the tour, the... Um, well, we also basically help to uh, manage the community, try to get more people to join, try to get people from all different kind of backgrounds to join, providing their expertise and having people starting interesting projects. So if they start a project there, yeah. how will it work? Uh, you come and you, we, on Wednesday night, we have this show and tell. It's for people who's either showcasing their work or talk about a project they want to do, but they need a partner. And so Wednesday is the event like this, and also comes in on Saturday and Sunday, and just grab anyone there and talk to them and see if anyone is interested in doing something. It's a, it's a community, it's about communication, yeah. it's about sharing the, um, well, sharing the, the interest of things. So is there from your part, is there some kind of business model behind um, it? Or not, is it? Not much of business model right now. It's the, we, uh, basically, um, the, 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 the hacker space depends on the donations and we, uh, working it so we are getting more and more donation on a monthly basis so we are getting to what we call a break even point who but, is giving the don donation to uh, people members who people who come okay. and people who come and maybe they buy stuff they maybe they buy like the uh, some kit we put together some uh component we have and basically they just it's for the comedian they pay for it they also sponsor the the, the space. So if, if some kind of product uh -huh. is, is, is founded there, is produced, you sell it there? Uh, we but will try and uh, right now we sell, uh, we try to use our social network to sell uh, a, a few of the members stuff they build. I mean one of our members do this uh, robotic control kit for RC car and it's produced it and we have it from the space and we help him to sell but selling that is not a, a cold business. It's just something uh, okay. member, the member built it and the other people who wants it. Good. Okay, so it's kind of a matching, yeah. a, a physical matching space. <laughs> it's kind <laughs> of physical matching space in terms of, I mean, this is not different from the, the amateur photographer or yeah. an amateur golfer. I mean, <clears throat> same people go there, uh, I mean, photographer, amateur photographer goes to a club goes to a, a, a gather a meetup and to mm -hmm. exchange the 
uh, ideas, tips, everything about photography. And mm. for hackerspace, it's a place people go to exchange ideas about electronics, hacking tools, hacking toys. Yeah. How big is it? Just give us a uh, Right now we there. have about 10. We, it's, the space itself is about 100 square meter. Okay. Uh, it divides into several sections. There are sections to do the, the shop work, the drills, the, um, and then that's the, the, the a small section we're doing urban farming. And then urban farming? Yeah. Go indoor with the hydroponics, and that's one of the personal interests. And we get a, a small community around that as well. Um, and then we have the a southern station and all the tours to do electronics, uh, and then this table for people to sit around and uh, do their work. What is the driving force behind this? Why are you doing this, David? Uh, it comes up from the uh, it. Things get dry by personal need. So I want to build stuff and the apartment in Shanghai is not exactly big and the family likes to keep it neat. So I or well, near a space I can put all this hacking stuff uh, there. And we started with a couple friends who has the same need. And we push it not just like we rent the place, we close it up and just our club. Uh, we open it up and this is the this gives in, this gets interesting in terms of the um, uh, time to think about like what it means to run a hackerspace in China. Is this the very first hackerspace? This is the first hackerspace in China. Where are the models around? Um, the original hackerspace will probably trace back to San Francisco. Uh, Was it by Tony C, the guy who's running Sappos? No, uh, no, wait. That's the. I think that's the. The tech shop, but the, the, I mean the idea has been around for a long time. I mean, yeah. all the way back to the homebrew computer club, where Steve Jobs and Wozniak demo their first Apple mm. one, um, and I think that's the that's it's always been there, but it's just this couple of years it's been formally given a name. And the thing is also the barrier is becoming. Uh, very low in terms of people from any kind of background doesn't have to come from a hardware background yeah. to be able to do something interesting with control electronics yeah. and uh, sensor physical computing. Yeah. How would you describe Shanghai? We are right here at Shanghai. Uh, what kind of city is it? I mean, you've been living here for it's eight a, years. Eight years here, I say this is the this is the city still give you the hope is everything can come true. You still, you are not, you don't feel like you have been cast into certain uh, demograph, certain uh, certain level of the, at the certain place in the society. Uh, it's not, it doesn't cast people yet. But it's no matter where are, they come from. No matter that where they come from, I mean, they are, they are, of course, there are always people like local doesn't like the outsiders and outsiders, but overall, it's still the, the place people come and looking for dream. And it goes to Chinese, it goes to Chinese from other problems, it goes from to foreigners from all over the world, comes to mm -hmm. Shanghai. And Shanghai is also relatively safe. It's not, you don't get you don't get a lot of incident on the street. There's not a lot of crime. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's also one of the city I can feel comfortable walking outside at midnight in the dark alley. Yeah. So you left Taiwan to go to the U.S. The U.S. when I was... You were studying in yeah. the U.S. How yeah. much did the U.S. influence you? You spent quite a while there. I spent 10 years there. I think it's a lot. And it's also... Um, you you go there and you starting to give in a chance to see what <coughs> what American is about and uh, fun part is I think um, I was there in the nineties and ninety is the uh, kind of U.S. starting to go in another direction and but it's also may run into the whole internet first internet bubbles. Mm. So was experiencing the bubbles and do all that. What was the new direction? 
when you said they were going uh, into a new direction? I think, I think it's, it's coming down to um, one thing is the economic development there is so far out there. It's not manufacturing product, it's not delivering value, it's delivering profit and dividends and difference. Um, I mean, we just see U.S. come out of mortgage uh, crisis and it's really people just practically just sell and buy and make up stuff. I mean, um, you mix a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you call it, you give it a value and and I think that is starting to something to poison the wall. And so that right now the best part of the, the I mean the US talents is either go and work on make up financial derivative or go try to get people to read more advertising. Mm. So mm -hmm. kind of sad stays uh mm -hmm. it's going into. So actually I have two, three more uh questions but they are exactly heading this this direction uh, at least in the western world there is something going on like or starting a discussion mm -hmm. about global governance mm -hmm. you know like the, the entire world is responsible uh, what what people are doing and 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 do you have this let's call it construct of global governance here in yeah. china as well I don't think it's quite there yet. I mean, the traditionally China politics, the there is a very paternal relationship with the yeah. with the the governing and the govern governed, and so that parental relationship extends very far in terms of the uh, if you provide me this 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 and I will behave like this this this. It's not. Mm -hmm. <coughs> It's not as free as maybe a democracy, but the uh, it's still wrong in underline of this parental relationship, uh, mm -hmm. mostly paternal relationship between the and I don't think most people at the not on the official side is been interested in global governance because that's already a social contract in place. Okay. And for the the governing here is the. Well, they have a handful anyway. I mean, it's not. I mean, very few, very few political systems is been told as like okay, the whole system is going to be, the whole system is going down because they have a riot somewhere, mm -hmm. and I think that's a typical scenario in Shanghai. There's mm -hmm. a riot in Shanghai suburban. The revolution is coming. There's a riot in Shanghai street. The revolution is coming. There are adjustment revolution where nobody show up. The revolution is coming. It's okay. kind of uh, that more um, uh, crime wolf type of reporting on um, where the yeah. and and the the governor the government the governing do have a lot of goal they have to uphold. Yeah. And and they would be risking to lose legitimacy. It is in them. Although it's that's not an alternative, but well, it's getting harder to push new stuff. Yeah. Uh, what kind of role? I mean, China is a very, very important market power in the in the world markets, economy yeah. wise. Uh, where do you see China's role within the world? Well, I think it's going to be at some point just play whatever the traditional role is is probably going to be close and just the necessary communication with external and this is not probably not going to be a political decision but this is more going to be a, a, a cultural decisions um, if we look at the history of China is China practically don't invade anybody who don't speak the same language so the, the traditional expansion of the territory is very slow. Um, mm. And I think that is still buried in everybody's mind here in terms of um, there's no reasons to really, uh, at least there's self-interest involved. There's no reasons to go out and be the, the police of the war or become the, the savior mm. of the war. Mm. Um, it's, it's 
practically the the policy is advocating self determinations. Yeah. Do you feel in China something like this east west these mm -hmm. entities or is it more like a we above or No, it's the it depends. It depends who sit across the table. If the it's there's always them and us. But the them and us dynamic change depends on the table. Depends on who's there. So I mean, if there's a foreigner there, then I'm treating more Chinese. I'm Taiwanese and treating more Chinese. If there's no foreigner there, then that's become Taiwan and us. Or it's it's not serious, but it's also an observation people will constantly bring up. Is the yeah, where are you from? And it's you, it's me. Okay. And it also comes from because everybody speaks different dialect. Okay. Um, 90% of Chinese have in Mandarin as second language. A second language? Yeah. 90%? Yep. Wow. So, yeah, when we speak Mandarin, it's all... It's... I didn't learn Mandarin until I was four. And okay. We speak Taiwanese dialect at home. Yeah, yeah. So, what would you say are the biggest challenges right now for young Chinese people? Um, trying to figure out the it is hard and they have a hard life right now in terms of people have such an expectation for them is the they want them to I mean for my generation they want them to work for work like my parents I mean probably in German the post World War Two generation who has to work hard work hard about everything as the goal and then that's the second generation who can start into right on the wealth of the first generation to be able to do something mm. and but the 20 something young people today has been looked at as has having to be the two generation at the same time it's the have to be the generation who's hard working about everything get a stable family get the take care of the kids and that part of generation and then that's the the free spirit generation comes after that who wants to explore wants to and 20 something they are basically being asked by as the you have to be both which is tough it's very tough it is very okay. tough I mean for most of us it's like making us doing combining ourselves and our parents mm. and so yeah and I think people are getting by but they get extra amount of pressures what do you mean um, so in, in the metropolitan area, it's internet is spread and the 20 something they want to be like the global 20 something who have a little care of the world. They can go out, do their dream, go book packing in Kunming for two years and mm -hmm. basically just picking up small jobs and do their and having a, a free life. Um, there's actually quite a lot of them in Kunming right now. Um, basically, just the hippies. It's the it's the this generation's India, okay. um, and they look at this. They look at this. Like, okay, this is what the twenty something should do. And with the mandates of getting the house, getting getting a house, have kids, and yeah. yeah, yeah. How is it in the rural areas? Totally different stories. No, uh, more or less the same. It's More? still the pa the pressure is still on. It's just yeah. the in the rural area. That's the it's a lot of the parents who's working in the city, and then they are sending money back. The people don't see their kid for years, and kid are back home with the the grandparents and trying to still get pushed to study, but still get pushed to. And once they grow, they come to age. They don't. Uh, they either go to university or they go into the workforce. Mm -hmm. So the very last question would be, what is your understanding of we and has it changed since the rise of the internet? I think the... I was having a conversation is the the internet trivialized conversation. It's... Um, I mean, for 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 people who are serious with serious subjects, the internet is is great as the as the exchange uh, medium. But for most of the time, I think it 
trivialize the relationship. I mean, we are friends on Facebook. We are friends on the on such such network, and from different people comes to different expectations, um, and that we is actually more interesting in China than uh, everything else. Everywhere in the world is the you get a much bigger boundaries in the West in terms of I'm on Twitter. I'm not you probably won't ask your friend is like when you're in the middle of conversation say and he asks some question and you answer like did you didn't you see my last tweet? And that thing is surprisingly easy to come out in the conversation here. People on the social network still expecting a very traditional friendship. As I, I watch you, you watch me, and you do care about what I say. And so, I, having so much time is like, in the middle of the conversation, it's like, did you see my last tweet? I was like, dude, I follow a thousand people, and I don't really, really? I just pick it up like a water cooler joke. Yeah. yeah. So it is the we is, it is changing. The, the we is changing in terms of the. I think for the Western social network, I think it gives people some more reason to be themselves, to be by themselves, just with themselves, and uh, make them kind of push it away from the the societies. And I go on Facebook to show people my good side. Okay. And um, and Westerners also have a much more formal protocol in terms of what kind of things, how, when something can be said. Okay. Uh, so that's the kind of we I feel, and so it's very businessish um, on Twitter to some extent. And uh, on Xinan Weibo is you get this feeling of like everybody is still just came out from the same village. You okay. got to know my cousins whose second aunties is married to someone in your family. Those kind yeah. of kind of like small town. I think you can still get those small town feeling. Everybody knows everybody, and somehow Chinese social network the we is like that. It's the you get this like very. I mean, even a, a follow relationship on the Weibo is been much more serious than a follow relationship on Twitter. Weibo is the Chinese Twitter. Twitter yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I think um, the interpretation of Wei is, is going to come up with the. It realizes it with different cultural background. And um, I don't think I'm not that much in the, in the difference in the, in, the, in the technology utopians. I don't think. I think with all this, it's just going to be. The next stage is just going to be more highlighting about the difference mm. than the, the the common goal, and it gets back to the the human brain uh, hardcore program to be more interested in be more pay more attention to conflict and strategy than cooperation, mm. and somehow I think that's a challenge for anybody who wants to grow more governance and. It also allows very extreme views to congregate very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we already see that political examples in all over the world. So I think the we is getting the we is getting harder to define, and we get a lot of bystander, and mm -hmm. it's the for the good or bad is the things become more daytime talk show. I mean. How serious can people take the the uh, a revolution where people are dying? If your news source and one minute tell you somebody gets shot in the square, and the next minute is that check out my cute puppies, and the next minute is that you just have an egg for lunch, and I'm not sure if we are at the point of the stage of be able to do that kind of switch. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, David. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Yep.